Merry Christmas, Discovery. How are you guys feeling tonight? Feeling good? Christmas at Discovery. So glad that you are here today. This is one of my favorite services of the year. I love everything about this season. How many of you believe with me that Jesus is the reason for the season? Amen. Can we just be reminded of that amidst all the craziness that Christmas brings, all the hustling and the shopping and the arguments with your family and all that stuff, the food, like, I, and I, you know what, honestly, I love it all, I love everything about Christmas, I do, I love Santa Claus and all of his elves and the present, I love it all, I do, but we just need to be reminded, we do, that Jesus is the reason for, for this season, you guys, and today's message that um, was actually, in, I was inspired by this message, it's been, it's been a year in the making, a year ago, the Lord really put this word on my heart that I want to talk to you guys about for Christmas at Discovery 2019. What I want to talk to you about today is the power of the name of Jesus. How many of you believe there is power in the name of Jesus? There is power in his name, and I think we forget that sometimes. And, and, and I want you to check, listen to this, you guys. God re chose to reveal himself to us, and he, and he reveals himself in all kinds of ways. He reveals himself through experiences and through our circumstances. He reveals himself in our life, but God chose to reveal himself to us by name. He said, this is, this is my name, this is what you, can, what you can see me as and trust in me as, this represents my character, my personality, this is who I am. He chose to reveal himself to us by name, and every name of God carries meaning, it carries purpose, it's intentional, and, and I mean, that's the way names were back then, you, used to be, like, you chose your baby's names uh, because the meaning of the name. Somewhere along the way, we just started you know, choosing names because they sound cool. And, uh, and I don't mean to offend anyone with a cool name here. If you got a cool name, good on you, man. I'm glad you're here. But I think I, think I found like the beginning of this. I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow when she had her kid, and she named her kid Apple. You all remember that? Apple. Ever since then, everyone's like, that's so cool. We should find cool names for our kids. You got all kinds of... Names now, Frank Zappa, an artist, he named his daughter, check this out, he named his daughter this, Diva Thin Muffin. Come on, that's messed up. What are you doing? What are you doing? What does this mean? What is the meaning in any of this? And then you got, of course, Kanye West. He's like north, south, east, west. He's all over, he's all over the place. But there's meaning in the name of Jesus. There is power in the names of God. Let me, let me show you the Christmas story in Matthew chapter 1. If you're new to Discovery, you're a guest with us. We uh, have sermon notes, these notes. You can follow along in the message. It's inside of your bulletin. We provide those every week here, so you can follow along, even take some notes. If you're not into note-taking, I'll help you out. It's up here on this screen, okay? Matthew chapter 1, it, uh, has, it shows the Christmas story, one of the places that has the Christmas story, and this is how it begins. It says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. And I want to time out right there and just call to your attention, you guys, that God chose to come this way. Don't just, just acknowledge that, okay? God chose to come through a virgin, through an unmarried virgin of a low class, of a low state, almost like a dysfunctional, chaotic circumstance that God chose, okay? Because this was, she'd be branded now for the rest of her life as some type of harlot or there's a scandal. This is scandalous, you guys, in this age, in this time. And listen, God chose that. God chose to come into almost some people would say dysfunctional, causing some chaos and some pain there. I want you to file that away because that's important for us to understand. This was God's design. He came, which is weird, right? We're going to talk about that. It says, as Joseph considered this, he considered putting her away. I mean, think about it. What would you do, right? She's like, oh, I know I'm pregnant, honey, but you ought to hear this story. Yeah, this, I, it's a good one. I promise you, okay? He's like, whatever, chick. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, though. And jo he said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her, it's true, he says, is conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you're to name him. See, the name came from heaven. They didn't choose the name. God chose this name. You are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. See, I think everybody in this room, I would venture to say everybody in this room knows the name Jesus. 
He is, that is the most popular, famous name in all of history is the name of Jesus. We know we are so familiar with this name, but I think that's where our downfall is. We're so familiar, we forget its potency. We forget there's power in the name of Jesus. Even those of you that know that, and they like you come to church, and you may study your Bible and stuff, we can get so familiar with that name that we forget there is power in the name of Jesus. What does that name even mean? Well, there was a meaning in that name. What does it mean? Why did God choose to be named Jesus? Now, the, the, Jesus is just the Greek, it's a, it's a Greek name. It comes from a, the Hebrew name Joshua or Yeshua. Je, Jesus is the Greek equivalent of that. And here's what it means. Jesus means Savior, Deliverer, Rescuer. This is God's name. You see, a person's name, it, it, it offers insight into their identity. And although today in our culture, again, we choose names based on not their, what their meaning is, but how cool they sound, this is how God chose to be revealed by us. He chose to reveal himself this, this way. And, and, and sometimes even in our culture now, you'll get a nickname. You might have a name that doesn't mean, like, it just sounds cool, but you'll get a nickname by your friends that describe your personality. They describe your character or your characteristics. How many of you ever had a nickname? You don't ever have a nickname? I had a buddy, one of my friends, his nickname was Chewy. Chewbacca, yeah, <laughs> Chewbacca, because, check this out, because he, he was hairy and hot-tempered, that's the get the name Chewbacca, okay, he ain't anymore, he got saved, you know, he's still hairy, but he's not that hot-tempered anymore, but look, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 6 tells us this, God says, God is saying, I will reveal my name to my people, and they will come to know its power, the power of the name. See, you may know the name of Jesus, but that doesn't mean you've experienced the power of his name. You, you may know the name of God, but he, listen, God revealed himself by name so that you wouldn't just know it, but that you would come to know the power of that name. So this is God going, look, I'm going to show myself to you. I'm going to reveal my character, my personality. I'm going to reveal the purpose and the meaning of who I am to you, but not just so that you can know my name. I want you to Hey, hey, here's my name. Come, come, come and experience the power, God is saying, of my name. There is power in God's name. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. This is 700 years, Isaiah prophesying the birth of this king, of this Jesus. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called, he's going to have some names this is what you can trust about God. This is the meaning of who he is. He is a wonderful counselor. People come to me for counsel and advice all the time. But honestly, the, the, the level of advice, how good it is, depends on the day I'm having. All right? Let's just be honest. I'm human. I am not 100% accurate all the time. But listen, we serve a wonderful counselor. He is always good. His counsel is always wise and just and right and true. And that's why I don't lead people to myself. I don't say, hey, I got all the answers. All I have to do is lead people to the wonderful counselor. He's got the answers. Amen, somebody? He is a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. See, these are more than just monikers. These are mighty. There is power in these names of God. Here, write it down this way. Every name God has is a promise that he has made. Every name God has is a promise that he has made. God's name is like a key that unlocks the treasure of all that God has for you. Not in your notes, but there's a proverb in chapter 18 that says that the name of God is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are kept safe, is what the Bible says. The name, his name, is a fortified place. It's a place that offers freedom. A place that offers safety and security and peace. Check this out. God is so awesome that he has a name for every one of your needs. And here's the secret. Here's, here's what I hope to do today. When you, when you can apply the name of God that, that to your situation and to your need, you will come to know in the name of Jesus. I'm proclaiming this today. You will come to know the power of God's name. Amen, somebody? Amen. There is power in his name. And there's hundreds of names in the Bible. God, God revealed himself in like hundreds of ways, of names that he could say, this is who I am. This is the value that I, can, that I can bring. You can trust in this name. It's who I am. Hundreds of them. I just want to give you a few of them today. And out of these names, 
that we're going to study, we're going to go over the way God revealed himself to us, I, I, if it applies to your season, because some of these, it's going to apply to you personally. This applies to your season. It applies to what you're going through and what you need today. And if you can just take that name, if you can grab hold of the name of God, the promise he's made in that name, and apply it to your need, and apply it to your situation, you'll come to know the power of God through his name. Here's how God revealed himself to us. Here's the first name I want to give you. He said, I am Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord your what? The Lord your provider. God says, you can, look, this is who I am. I am the provider. Everything that you have, God says, guess what? I have provided. I am the Lord your provider. Everything that you have, every gift you have, every ability that you have, every breath that you take, Every, every day that goes by, the weeks and the years that tick on, God says, those are my gift to you. I am the Lord, your provider. But check this out. God is not only your provider, your provider. He is also your provider. You see, before you ever have the need or even know the need that you have, he has already made provision for that need. Come on, amen, somebody? He doesn't just meet your need when you come up against a problem or situation. When you're in need, listen, God knows the need you are. God knows the challenge you're going to face next week. God knows the obstacles that are uh, awaiting you next year in your 2020. He knows the opposition. He knows the challenges and the circumstances, and he has already decided to meet that need. Why? Because he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. That word Jireh, that word Jireh comes from this root word meaning to see to see. Aren't you, aren't you glad that God sees you? And God sees your need. And he sees your need before you ever have the need to know that it's a need. Why? Because he sees. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. And some of you need to take that name, the power and the promise of that name, because you're in need today. You need, the, you need provision today. You, need, you have a need, and you need to apply the name to your need and experience. You need to come to know the power of of the Lord, our provider. This next name, before I give it to you, let me just say that many of us wrestle with the wrong questions when we're facing opposition, when we're facing challenges. We're like asking all the wrong questions. We're trying to figure out the solution and wrestle it down, and, and, and we're not asking the most important question when we're faced with opposition. You know what the most important question that you can ask when you're in a, a facing an obstacle? Here it is. What does God say about this? That's the question. You see, when you, when you are stuck wondering how to overcome the opposition, how to handle the, the situation, it could be anything. It could be addiction. It could be loneliness. It could be low self-esteem. It could be fear. All this. When you're stuck trying to wrestle that down, you're acting like the battle is yours. And the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Look, I, look, I got news here. I don't mean to offend you, but you're not smart enough. You're not clever enough. You're not strong enough to defeat an enemy from another realm. That is not your battle. That battle belongs to Jehovah Saba. He is the Lord, our what? He is the Lord, our warrior. Some of you have been fighting. You need the power of this name. You need to come to know the power of the Lord, our, our, our warrior, because you've been fighting a battle. You've been fighting some opposition. You've been trying to figure out, how am I going to get through this? But when you position yourself in the name of God, in Jehovah Saba, the Lord, our warrior, you can defeat any foe and disarm any power. Amen, somebody? He is, there's power in the name of Jesus. Every name, it holds a promise for us. Here's the next name, Jehovah Rohi. He is the Lord, our shepherd. When I was studying this, this, this word, this name, and, and what the promise is in the Lord, our shepherd, I started thinking of one of my favorite heroes of all time, Superman. Those that know me know I'm a big Marvel and DC fan. I used to collect comic books and the cards and all that. I used to have the Superman blankets and sheets and wallpaper Superman. All the, the Justice League was on my wall, man. I was, I, I was reminded, though, of this movie. I've seen all, like, all the movies, too. There's an old Superman movie where Superman, the scene in the movie where he swoops in and he saves this guy from this fiery inferno, this blazing fire, and he picks him up in his arms and he's flying high above the sky to rescue this guy, and this guy is shaking. And Superman asks him, what's the matter? What's wrong? And he says, I'm afraid. Because if I fall, I'm so high up in the air. If I fall from this height, I'll surely die. And, and he wasn't wrong, right? It seemed like a legitimate concern the guy had. But, but, but Superman responded. He said, do you think I have enough power to rescue you from the fire, but not enough power to safely take you home? 
<laughs> you see, a lot of us, we, we trust God. We believe that he has rescued us from the fire of hell, but he doesn't have, we don't trust him enough to safely take us home. We, we trust God enough that he's going to secure a home for us in heaven, but we don't trust him that he actually has our back here on earth. You see, if that sounds familiar, if that's something that you struggle with, then you need to know and come to know the Lord, our shepherd, that he is guiding you. He is leading you. He will take care of you. He will get you to where you need to be. Amen, church? This next name is so important for us to come to know the power before I give it to you. Um, because we live in a world of turmoil, a world of disaster, a world of calamity, a world of division, a world of war and strife, and, and uh, uh, we, live in, we live in a tumultuous time, but that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is, the, is actually when the turmoil gets inside your own heart. That's the worst. That when, when you have so much pain and anxiety and depression that, that you can't even live with yourself anymore, and you try to cover it up and soothe it with other things, but the reality is some of us are at war within ourselves. Some, it, some of you, it, it's turmoil in your heart, turmoil in your home, turmoil within your own life. And if that's you today, you need to come to know this name, Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord, our peace. God says that he has a peace for us that surpasses all understanding. See, it's, it's a peace that is not created from your circumstances. It's a peace that, that is not created from your marriage or from the economy or from any of that. It's, it's a it's a peace that is, check this out, it's a peace that is a person. Jesus says, I am the prince of peace. He said, I am Jehovah Shalom, the Lord your peace. That doesn't matter what circumstances you face. It doesn't matter the challenges in our economy or in, even in your marriage. God says, I can give you peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that God gives. Shalom. It means wholeness, completeness. It means we have our lives properly aligned and in order. We're at peace with God. I've made peace. I'm aligned and ordered. I know. I have, and some of you, you're, you, you have challenges on the outside, circumstances, uh, difficulties, disasters even. But that's not the most difficult thing you're experiencing. The most difficult thing is you let the turmoil get inside here. And what you need to know, and what you need to apply today is the power, to come to know the power of his name, that he is Jehovah Shalom, that although you can have tr troubles in your relationships, troubles in your finances, you can have challenges in this world, and we're going to have a lot of them, but it doesn't need to get in here because the Lord is my peace. Amen. Here's the last name I'll give you here, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals. Let's level the playing field today right now, okay? None of us are perfect. None of us are living pain-free lives. All of us have to experience brokenness. Can we just, every one of us, we have brokenness in our emotions, brokenness in our bodies, brokenness in our relationships. Every one of us needs to experience the healing power of God. We need God to heal the pain of our past. Some of us need God to heal the anguish of our present. We need God to show up in power, to come to know the power of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. This is how God has revealed himself to you. And not that you would just know his name and be able to speak Hebrew or something. It's so that you can actually apply his name to your need and come to know the power of God. Turn your notes over. I want to continue that story in Matthew chapter 1. Because it, it continues. It says, all of this occurred, like all of it, like why God came in the form of that he did to a virgin he did in the time he did in the crazy, what some people will call a dysfunctional and weird circumstance, like all that. He, all that occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, the prophet we've been reading about in Isaiah, all that stuff. He says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him. So this isn't even a name that, that, that not just a name that God has given him, but he says everyone's going to know him this. Everyone's going to call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with 
us. You see, look here, there, this is the power in this name right here. The reason why you can proclaim the promise and receive the power of Jehovah Rapha. The reason why you can grab hold of, the reason why you have access of the Lord our healer, the Lord our peace, the Lord our shepherd, the Lord our warrior. The reason why you can have access to that is not because you went hold of and grabbed a hold of God. It's because God came and grabbed a hold of you. The only reason why you have access to the power and the promise of God's name is because Emmanuel, God, came to us. And God didn't just come to us. Jesus just didn't come to us. And in a, he was a king born in a manger. He wasn't a king born in a palace. If he was a king born in a palace, then only royalty could come and worship him. Only royalty can approach that palace. But Jesus came to a virgin, curl out of wedlock, born in a manger, heralded the announcement of this Savior by shepherds, one of the poorest economic classes of their time. Why? Why go to the extent to come in such a dysfunctional, chaotic way? It's so that God could be with every single one of us in the middle of our dysfunction, in the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our crazy lives. God is with us. He gives us access. His name, Emmanuel, gives us access to the promises and the power of God. The theological word for this is called the incarnation. It's, it's God was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, it's, it's really easy to believe that God is with us when everything's going good, right? When everything's going good, it's easy to know, understand, believe, and even feel the presence of God when things are going good. When you're having a mountaintop experience, right, it's easy to, to know God is good. When you got the good news, it's easy to know hey, 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 God, is, God is with me. When you, when you got that promotion or when you got that raise or when your newborn baby finally sleeps all night, you know what I mean? It's easy to, to experience God is with me. Or when you're going shopping at the mall and there's a parking spot right there up front, you're like, God is with me today. It's easy to experience that in those moments. But I am here today to proclaim to you the promise of Christmas, the promise of his name, that God is not just with us when things are going good. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Write this down. He is Emmanuel, God with us in the valleys. In the valleys. You look in the, in the Bible, when, when you see the valleys, the valleys represent battles. Battles were fought in the valleys. And some of you are here today, and you're in the middle of a fight. Some of you are here today, you may be in the fight of your life, or at least you feel like you're in a battle for your life. The valleys represent seasons of depression seasons of desperation, seasons of loneliness. You know when you're in the valley of life or a valley season when you start thinking things like, I don't know if I can go on. I'm exhausted. I don't know if I have enough. I don't know if I am going to make it. You're in the middle of a valley and what you need to know is that Emmanuel is there. God is with us in the valley. Psalm 34 says it like this. The Lord is what? He's close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I know it feels like God is distant and God is far away when you got your heart broken, when they left you, or when that didn't happen the way you thought it should happen, when you were crushed in spirit, when you had an expectation of something and it didn't go the way you thought it would go. It feels like God is so far away, but the, it's actually the opposite. That's the fact. God says, I am close when they leave you. I am close when your heart is broken. I am close when you have an expectation that go unmet. God is present. Emmanuel is in the valley. And for many of us, we have to experience these valley seasons to get to the place of peace. It's, it's just the way life is. You have to, you have to endure the valley, to persevere through the valley in order to arrive at this place of peace. The psalmist knew this, Psalm 23, a very famous psalm. I love it. It says this, it says, in, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I don't have to be afraid. Like I, when, I'm, when, I, when my heart is broken, when my spirit is crushed, when my expectations go unmet, when I'm in that dark valley, I don't have to be afraid. Why? Because you are, there it is again, what? You are close beside me, God. You are there with me in my valley. Let me give you an Emmanuel truth for anyone who's in a valley 
today. Or maybe for your valleys that you're going to come up against, because every one of us are going to have valleys, seasons of desperation, seasons of loneliness. Every one of us have to experience brokenness and a crushing of our expectations. Here's an Emmanuel truth that you need to know. It's not in your notes. We may enjoy God on the mountaintops, but we get to know him intimately in the valleys. It feels good on the mountaintop. You know the presence of God. You can enjoy the presence of God. That's great. But you you get to know the closeness of God in the valleys, the closeness of God amidst the the brokenness, amidst the crushing experiences. God is never closer to the brokenhearted. Amen? He is Emmanuel. Although I may be in a valley right now, God is leading me. God is right beside me. He is with me in the valley. Number two, God is with me in the storm. God is with me in the storms of life. All of us experience storms. We all will. They're difficult times. That Storms are difficult times that seem to blow in out of nowhere. Like the storm we're experiencing today. Like out of nowhere, that thing just blows in. And every one of us are going to have to experience storms in life. Storms of betrayal. Storms of depression, storms of sometimes divorce, storms of illness, storms of pain and hurt and difficulty and tragedy. We all will experience storms in our life. And 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 I know it feels like, again, in those storms that maybe God's not present. But what you need to know is Emmanuel, God is with you in the boat in the middle of the storm. There's a a story in Acts chapter 27 of the apostle Paul when he was he was actually traveling with some guys in a, a ship, and they were out at sea, and they were battered and beat by a crazy storm. For, for days, they had to come up against this, and they were throwing, it was so bad, they were throwing all the cargo overboard, the things that they needed to survive, like their food and stuff. They didn't care. They said, you know what? We're not going to survive this. None of this matters. We're chucking it all. Acts chapter 27, verse 20, it says, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. And that's a, a very devastating statement right there. And I can sympathize with that statement because I see it a lot in, in people where, and you may be even here today, where you've given up all hope. Like you're in a storm that seems like it's going on and on and it's beating you and battering you and you're throwing cargo overboard. You're throwing out your hopes. You're throwing out your dreams. You're throwing out relationships. You're just trying to survive and you're at a place where you have lost hope today. And I, I, I hope today that you would realize that Emmanuel, God, is with you in that storm. Look what Paul says as Acts 27 continues. He says, but now I urge you to keep your courage because not one of you will be lost. Man, and I speak that to you in the mighty name of Jesus prophetically. Some of you feel like you are lost or going to be lost, that you have lost hope because of this storm. And I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that you need to take up courage because you will not be lost. Only, he says, the ship will be destroyed. Hey, there's going to be some things in your life that aren't going to last. All right? But check this out. You may lose your job, but you're not going to lose your marriage. Hey, you, you may lose, you may lose your, your, your house, but you're not going to lose your soul. Come on, are you hearing me, you guys? Some of these things don't matter. Storms are going to happen. Economies are going to collapse. Things, hey, you may lose the car, but you're not going to lose the kids. All right? Amen, somebody. Look, look, he says, look, some things are going to get destroyed. Some things, the storms of this life are going to take them out, but God is with you in the storm. He said this, last night, an angel of God to whom I belong, and whom I serve, where was he? He stood beside me. My God is with me in my storms. It feels like he's far away, but God is close in your storm. Here's an Emmanuel truth for your storm. If you're experiencing a storm today, here's the truth. Never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of your God. God, look, just because there's a storm doesn't mean God's not there. He's in the boat. He is with you. God is with you in the valley. He is Emmanuel. He's with us in the valley. He is with us in the storm. Write it down like this. Number three, he's with us always. God is with us. Listen, it's who he is. It's his character. It is his nature. He chose. It is where God is. Please listen. It's not about where you are. 
It's not about where you are. It doesn't matter where you are today. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can never run too far. It's never too late for God to, to be right there beside you. You see, this is not about you. He said, look, I am Emmanuel. It's who I am. I am God with you. See, in this room here today, there's some of you that you, you go to church. You go to church regularly, but some of you haven't been to church in a long time. And you're thinking like, I can't go to church. I can't get close because you're fooling yourself. God has never left you. You think, oh, I've done a lot of bad things. I've messed up so far. I've been running from God. You can't get away from God. He is ever present. He is Emmanuel, God with us. You need to know that today, that God loves you. He has never given up on you. He has never left you. Some of you have given up on yourself. You've given up on your dreams. You've given up maybe even on God, but God has not given up on you. Why? It's not about you. It's who he is. And it's the power of his name, Emmanuel. He is God with us. John chapter 14, Jesus said it like this. He said, if you love me, keep my commands. Some of you need to reconcile that verse today. Jesus is Jesus saying, hey, if you love me, follow my way. Follow my plan. I, I, I've got a plan for your life, and it's good. I promise you. It's not going to restrict your life. Please listen to me. Jesus is saying, my plan will not restrict your life. It will release your life. God wants to release you into your destiny. He wants to give you access to the promises and the power of his name that can be applied to every need. Jesus is saying, if you love me, follow me. Follow me. I'm for you and I'll ask the father and he'll give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever the Holy Spirit he says the spirit of truth the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the seal of the promise that's his name the seal of the promise you see every name of God holds a promise that he's given us there is power in it and the seal of that promise that we have access to every name, to every provision, to every power that God has given. It's through the seal of the Holy Spirit, the ever-present. Here's the name. It wasn't in your, but if you guys want to study, it's, it's, it is it's um, is Jehovah uh, Shama, the ever-present one. That's, it, that's another name. I know. I'm sorry. I gave you way too many names now. It's a Hebrew study today for Christmas. Amen? Here's what he said. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but today some of you need to come to know him some of you need to come back to know him he says you know him for he lives with you and will be in you and then he says this he says jesus says i will not leave you as orphans will you please hear this today listen you are not fatherless you are not look jesus said i'm not going to leave you as an orphan, some of you feel like you don't have someone to call on for wisdom, for advice, for counsel, godly wisdom. Some of you feel like you are left alone on an island, almost fatherless. And Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I am your everlasting father. I am your wonderful counselor. I am your mighty God. I am your prince of peace. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. Can I pray for you, church? Let's bow our heads all across this worship center. God, we just thank you.